tell me when you can go and okay we're good all right all right today's lesson is on mutations <laughs> And so we're going to go over uh, the definition of a mutation. Jenna, you kind of were on board there. What we are talking about here is that a mutation is any change and I'm going to give you a shorthand, it's just a symbol for the word change. You can use a triangle. Any change in DNA of a gene or a chromosome. <coughs> Bless you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's the definition there. Any change in the DNA of a gene or a chromosome. And we know that mutations incur inside animals and plants, right? So anything that's living, and it happens within the cells, in the cell's nucleus. So any cell that has a nucleus could have a potential for a mutation. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna happen, but that's where all your DNA is located. So let's look at the genetics here. Genetically, let's talk about humans. Genetically, how many pairs of chromosomes do we have? 23. Pairs. 23. Genetically, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Can I say chromes, and you guys all understand what I'm talking about, so yeah. I don't write out chromosomes? 23 pairs of chromes. Now remember, 22 of those pairs are called your body, are called autosomes. Autosomes. Right, those are your body cells. So those are all <clears throat> the cells and tissues, muscles, your blood, body cells. And then there's one pair which are your sex cells, right? We learned about that already. Oops. Now, within any of those pairs, there could be a mutation that happens. If it happens in the body cells, then you're, something is not gonna form correctly in the physical body or the internal body. If it happens in the sex cells, there could be a genetic disorder that um, could cause early death, or it could be something that, that changes and alters the gender somehow. And usually it's not, not a good thing. It's usually something detrimental. Okay? So DNA here, one of three things. DNA can be, I'm going to use this triangle, it can either be changed. You understand what I'm talking about here? I'm going to go triangle B. It can be changed. It could be deleted. Or you could have some added DNA. That's not a good thing either. I'm thinking if you have more DNA, that's not good. Possibly. You could do that on any of these if it's changed, deleted, or added. Wait, so why would you die? 
We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Great question. Great question. All right. So, so far, let's go to number two here. Here is the key to life. If you don't learn anything else here during this genetics unit, I do want you to learn this. The key to life. <laughs> Happiness is the key to life. Well, you can't be happy unless you have this stuff. There are four proteins. And proteins are made up of these little building blocks called amino acids. Amino acids that make up all DNA. All DNA. So no matter if it was living or now is dead, it was made up of DNA at one time. And everything that, that's one thing we have in common with, with plants, animals, you know, bacteria, everything is that these four proteins are what make up, what makes us common. So I need you to learn four letters. How many letters are in the alphabet? 26? 27. 27? That is 26. 26, I think 26. I don't know, how many? 26, there's 26 letters. 26, all right. We only need to learn four. First one is an A. All right, I'm just gonna put a little underline here so you can remember this. This one stands for the amino acid adenine. Can you guys say that? Adenine? Adenine. Adenine. And I want you to underline the I-N-E because that means something here. And we'll talk about that in just a second. <clears throat> now these proteins, <clears throat> they have a specific partner. They got a best friend that they pair with and they don't pair with anything else except their partner. Now, if they don't pair with their partner, then that's when we have trouble. That's when these mutations come in. So adenine only pairs with the letter T. Unline that. And that one stands for thymine. And I'm gonna underline the ene. Well, you're going to find out they all end in ene. But there's a reason they end in ene. It's because they are amino acids. Anything that ends in E, or I-N-E here, when we're talking about proteins, are those are amino acids. Okay? So A always pairs with T. Just get that, get that in your head here. The next one is G. This always rem the way I remember this is I remember a bat's. Bat poo is commonly called guano, right? <laughs> Have you ever heard of that guano? Guanine is the name. Guanine. Again, I N E. Guanine, that means it's an amino acid. Now, guanine always has best friend with C. This will be four. One, two, three, four. Okay, four proteins. This last one is called cytosine. Cytosine. And you notice they all end in ene, correct? These are all proteins, amino acids. Those are the four proteins that make up life. Now, we're going to see how this all goes together. You're going to have to get out your drawing skills here. We are going to draw a double helix DNA model. It takes a little bit of practice. Ms. R is going to draw it up on the board, and I'm going to draw it here. Okay? So let me see if I can do this today without messing this up. All right? So let's go. It's going to be an abbreviated S like this, okay? Abbreviated S. 
That's one side of the DNA. And then we're gonna come here on the other side and we're gonna cross. Everywhere it comes up, you're gonna cross it. So it's gonna go like this. Okay. Wow, that was a nice was one. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do another one here on the side, just practice. Do we have to do the second one? Just yeah. do a little practice there. You have to do the second cross there. That was a nice one. Now, inside every cell, right, I'm just going to draw a quick animal cell. Inside is the nucleus. Right, I'm just going to draw a cell. This is the nucleus right here. Is all these strands of this DNA. It's just everywhere. These are your chromosomes. are all located on this DNA. This is the actual instructions for life. It's these four proteins. This is what's cool. So if we took one of these strands right here and then brought it out here, I want you to draw a little line, place a dot, little line, just so they like connect each other like that. Let me, I'm gonna blow it up a little bit so you can see. Let's do three up here. what I'm doing here. Kind of looks like a ladder, doesn't it? Rungs on a ladder. You do four down there? Yeah, I did four. It doesn't matter how many do. Just, just put some down there. Okay. So far so good? Yeah. So on, we're going to do the left side here. So if I'm going to put some letters, let's go A for the first, first rung. Let's go G and then a C, and then let's go, um, let's pick some letters of these letters. We got T, 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 a. and what do you want to do the last one? A. A. Okay. So we're picking those. Okay. Now DNA has a partner. These proteins have a partner. What's the partner here on the other side to this A? G. How many T's? A should be T, right? This G should be a what? C. Should be a C. I'm going to put that in. This C should be a, a G. Did you guys get the hang of this? T should be a A. T should be a A. G should be a C. And A should be a T. Okay. Oh, there's some perfect DNA. <laughs> Because it paired up correctly. So I just wanted to, to point out, like in science, when you're studying science, you have to think of ways to associate all your things. So when I looked at the figuring out how to pair, so the G and the C both have curves. And then your A and your T are just connect. You're still in a line. So those, those always go together so you can never mix it up. So oh, um, yeah, curve, so curve. Your curve goes with the and curve. Then straight lines. And the straight lines for the them. other ones yeah. are straight lines. Hey, yeah, that's a way to remember it there. Yep. Straight lines versus curves. Sounds like a, a <laughs> right. Here. All right. All right. So there's a. This is just a strand of DNA, right? This is just a strand of DNA. Okay. Now let's let's take this apart. DNA traits occur in threes. I'm going to say triplet. Triplet. Okay, we know what the prefix tri means. Anybody know? Uh, triangle. Well, that's what I think of, at least. Okay. Talking about numbers, though? Like, oh, so triangle? triangle. Good. Has, Xavier says three. So yeah, three triplets sides. mean that DNA traits, the trait here occurs in three. And we're talking about the codes, these codes here. So, in this, I'm gonna put code underneath traits for the codes. So let's take our first one. I'm gonna take one strand, bam, bam. Let's put a comma. And then I'll take our next one, bam, bam, bam. Put a comma. DNA is read in threes. 
All right, so if I've got T, A, oh, let's come up with a word out of our letters. Act. To act. Okay, what else? Act. Act. Okay, what else we got? What act. else do we need? <laughs> What's that? Jackson. That doesn't work. GCC? That's Jackson. not a word. Jackson cat. Oh, cat. Okay, we can do cat. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's our code on. This is our codes, right? They're in triplets. Now, what are their partners here? Let's go do our partners. What's our partner to A? T? A. A. They? Okay, when the, when the codes mess up, we can have what a single one with just one letter messed up, or we can have a whole triplet messed up. So this is where your mutations come in. And so whenever this messes up here, the next codes that are coding, it just keeps coding on down a line, what do you think is going to happen with the rest of the code? They're going to get messed up. They're going to be messed up too. And at that point, it depends on where it's happening in the chromosome and at what stage it's happening, how bad the mutation is. So like if it's towards the end of the thing, it won't be as bad. Right? Correct. So if it's towards the end of, of forming, that, that could not be so bad. So just think about it. Like your skin, if you fell down and, and scraped your knee, right? You got skin cells that need to be replaced. Right? You get a scab, all that stuff. So your body, your body is churning along here, making new skin cells, boop, 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 boop. and then it eventually gets to a point where there's a code, a triplet code. It's called a stop code. It's three letters, it's three proteins. I don't remember what the letters were. But the thing is, once you've got your cut and it's healed and everything, the, the skin is all back and it got a nice little scar there or not, it stops. Your body doesn't just keep producing. However, if there's a mutation at the stop code and it keeps going and keeps producing these letters to say I need more skin, the skin's gonna do what? It's gonna start building up. And that buildup of skin, that, I mean, that buildup of cells and, and repeated overgrowth of cells, literally that's what cancer is. That's all it is. It's just the stop code didn't tell it to stop growing. And so you end up with a tumor or just an overgrowth, okay? So what, we, what we're looking at with these mutations here, most everything we are, I mean, we're all in good shape, typically, because our stop codes work. Yes, but some people might have disorders that we don't know about, right? And we're gonna to get to those three types of disorders right now. So if you need to go to a new page, let's do that. Well, you so might get a type. paper cut, it could eventually be turning into a tumor or something like that. Well, something as simple as that, because it's just very simple cells there, typically not. But when we're looking at, um, when we're looking at like skin damage, like melanoma, right? That's where the melanin cells are overgrowth, right? That's where you can, can get some skin cancer. See, this is animated cells that work, and it's pretty much just like people, but they're cells, so their their names are only like white cell, like red cell, uh -huh. and white cell. So um, they like it's pretty much just like the human body, and like they go through like cancer. Mm -hmm. There's like cancer cells. They go through like scabs. It's really good. Oh, cool. Yeah. And what was the name of that? Cells at work. Cells at Cells at work. Is it on a YouTube? Netflix. Okay, no. Netflix. All right, so this is for everybody. If you got some time, you can watch Cells at Work. Maybe write that down on Netflix. Cells 
Oh, I'd love to watch it. So three types of mutations. This will be number um, three. All right, so you, we can have beneficial mutations. What does the what does the prefix "beni" mean? Do you guys know what "beni" means? What'd you say? Good. Good. It means good. So there are good mutations. These are the ones that carry through to the next generation. That helps the organism survive. So this beneficial mutations increase the chance of survival. Okay. And so you're probably asking me, well, what the heck are some good good mutations that might increase my chance of survival? <laughs> um, I haven't seen that in person yet. <laughs> An example, think about it, if you've got, if you're up in the Arctic, right, it's cold up there, snow, and you've got the Arctic hare, which is H-A-R-E, which is a rabbit, right, and you've got a little, all these little baby bunnies, rabbits, that were born, and you have a couple of them that were dark. Think about that. Is the survivability of that animal going to be higher? No. In a, if they're dark fur in a white environment? No. no. Because a predator, like a little fox or something, is easy, easy to see and they're going to die. Well, the thing is, if they die, they can't breed and have little, more babies, right? So you just eliminated that, that animal. <clears throat> the ones that are going to live are the ones that are going to be camouflaged. So beneficial mutations like camouflage, camo, u, flage, is a good mutation. And so now if we have all these little white bunnies that are left, they're going to be able to breed with other white bunnies and then have little white bunny babies. So they're, they're going to be able to live on to the next generation. Maybe a little fox might get them, but they still will be camouflaged. So that's a beneficial. Another one would be a harmful mutation. Now, what do you think it's going to do to your survival? Decrease. If it's harmful. Decrease. Yeah, definitely. This one decreases the chance of survival. Um, a lot of your uh, really bad genetic disorders are this. They decrease the chance of survival. One of these, I will give you an example here, is cystic fibrosis. I do not remember what chromosome it's on. I think it's 14. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder where your body automatically starts producing more mucus in your lungs, right? Have you ever had a really bad cold and you're coughing all that junk out of your lungs, right? Um, this is, people that have cystic fibrosis have this continuously. They're literally drowning. It's chromosome seven. Chromosome seven, okay. I'll put chrome seven here. Thank you for looking that up. Oh, you're welcome. So, not only do they have mucus in their lungs, they also have mucus in their intestines. And so if it's covering your intestine, right, that's where all your absorption of your food, your nutrition, they are not able to absorb their nutrients from their food. So they are very small, very tiny, and sickly too. Um, I did have a student about 15 years ago uh, that had cystic fibrosis and, and as female, their life expectancy is 18 to 20. Redu so it's a reduced life expectancy. Think about all the problems they have, 
right? So with all those problems, it just decreases your life expectancy. And um, the, the student that I had, they, they allowed, allowed them to come to school about every three weeks just to socialize, just because they had to be at home all the time because they're sick all the time. And they would go in every day and have um, a nebulizer where they had to inhale the salt water solution. So you know what salt water does, it dries things out, right? So it kind of dried their lungs out for at least a day. And then they had to go back daily and have that done. Yeah, go ahead. What about asthma? Is that asthma is a genetic disorder, yes. And it's on several different chromosomes. It's not, it's not something that's gonna cause you to die though. It might have, it might have repercussions on your lungs a little bit of wear and tear, more wear and tear than somebody that doesn't have asthma. One time on my head, I used two like heat tanks for asthma, and it just doesn't work. Oh. You use the inhaler things? Yeah. And I have more tech in my head. Yeah, that has a that has a chemical in there that helps open up your openings in your in your lungs so you can breathe. Oh, Oh, really? Uh, soccer games, yeah. It might be something related to the drug yeah, that's in yeah. there. And the Accutane. Right. Yeah. We stop taking it now. Oh, good. One minute. Yeah, here in California, we, I mean, 15, 20 years ago, our air was a lot worse, a lot dirtier than it is now. So people were really having bad asthma. But My brother had asthma, but then um, he started playing football and he stopped and he stopped. Huh. Mm -hmm. Got better, better lung capacity yeah. there. The last one is called neutral, a neutral. What happens when you put your car in neutral? Don't and it don't go anywhere, right? You could just rev it up and it'll just sit there. So a neutral mutation, what do you think? What do you project a neutral mutation would be? It's just, do anything. It just, kind of just there. It's just there. It's there, right. It's something mutated in the, in the DNA but it did not have any effect on you. So there's no long-term effect, okay? No long-term. It doesn't increase your survivability, nor does it you know, decrease your survivability. Example would be like your hair color. You're not gonna die hair color is a certain color. So we did talk about albinism, right? That, that would be the only time that there would be a genetic defect that causes your hair cells not to have pigment. But we've all got pigment in our cells, right? We've all got different colored hair. And then you, you didn't die because you had different color hair, right? <laughs> okay. That's where I want to stop today because the next thing would be environmental effects, which we're going to talk about in the sun. Okay? You guys have a great day. What I want you to do 